Grasvelli stellt auf der NEB Show 2016 Edius 8.2 vor und direkt jetzt am Ende der NEB Show wird die Version auch kostenlos zum Download für alle Anwender verfügbar sein. Bei mir ist Alex von Grasvelli, der Produktmanager und ähm, er wird uns ein bisschen einen Ausblick auf die kommenden ähm, Neuerungen geben, was innerhalb der Edius 8 Version noch auf uns zukommt. Alex, I would like to ask you, um, now you're showing a lot of new features in 8.2, but maybe you have already thought about the upcoming next version, and now you have released 8.2. So can you tell us a little bit about what users can expect for the future? Yeah, um, so we already have a lot of things coming, and uh, I'm, I also know that we still have not delivered what we originally promised uh, how do you say, a year ago, um, regarding that what we will have in 8.0. So we are still continuing on our development and uh, soon after we hope to release uh, new functionalities um, regarding the 8 series. Okay, that was not very detailed, <laughs> so <laughs> maybe I may, may ask. So, I mean the motion tracker is amazing, this is a new functionality and uh, it's a very powerful tool. Um, but there will be some improvements with the motion tracker as well? Uh, yes, so um, right now we believe this is our first step of implementing the motion tracker. So the next step uh, we're considering several ways uh, in more or like in the graphics area, like uh, having the function within the layouter to track objects within uh, the video and have say like adjoining graphics to move together with it. Okay, so when I'm moving here, we could still have like Michael on my hat, and Michael is moving with my hat. Something, something like that. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And uh, well, in the agenda for Edius 8, there were things like uh, optical flow. How, how is that? Is that something which is in the. It's also being considered. Um, it's, yeah, it's being, uh, how do you say, pushed back slightly due to some, um, uh, how do you say, priority issues. But uh, the, it's being worked on, and we hope to also release. Um, in the upcoming future versions. Um, do you get, when you're here at the show, we, we could see that you were also discussing with uh, users, you were showing the software yourself, so you're looking for getting some, some um, feedback from the users directly here at the show flow, which I think is very good. Uh, so what, what did they said? What, what are the demands for maybe uh, your upcoming functionalities? Yeah, uh, so basically first um, I hear a very good response when we're showing the new features in 8.2. Um, of course there's adjoining questions that come up with that, saying, well, so I see this, but what about this? Could I have the motion tracker in something else, like, like my titles or graphics? Uh, or in the color range section, then can I handle, like for instance, other raw formats other than Canon or Panasonic or Sony? Or would I be able to handle raw files more natively? Could I do other things? Um, so I'm getting a lot of feedback regarding wishes um, based on what we're showing um, here. So I hope that we can incorporate in the near, uh, near releases that, uh, that would come. Um, we have seen uh, a lot of uh, discussions about 4K and it's more and more the standard production format for many companies. Um, but we know also in, in Japan 4K is no longer that exciting. Uh, <laughs> people are talking about 8K. So can you tell us a little bit uh, what's going on in Japan there? Um, in that sense there's already discussions going on in Japan. Um, with the upcoming Olympics in 2020, they are targeting to have um, 8K uh, image distribution available. So people are trying to prepare or create a, how do you say, reasonable workflow where there would be 8K and probably 4K and probably still a lot of HD uh, monitors and videos available. We would want a affordable and a workable solution that will provide in um, those various formats, including 8K uh, resolution. Okay, and what kind of technology is from the Gris Valley side uh, yeah, already included in these solutions? So, up until now, Edius or we already had basic functionalities of supporting 8K, such as the codec and the uh, Edius software itself. But uh, when it comes to 8K, it also pro 
uh, includes other third party or other com partner companies that will provide 8K uh, workflow, such as the camera or such as the monitor or such as uh, switchers and routers and other things. So we would like to work together with uh, those uh, partners who can provide those equipments. And so, for instance, as an example, uh, we partnered with a company called Astro Design, which provides a 8K recorder actually using our HQX codec. So they can record natively in HQX and edit that in EDIUS, a 8K version of that, uh, which is not available yet, but uh, so that we will be able to provide a, uh, how do you say, a new workflow that would uh, uh, provide uh, good usability to this purpose. Okay, so Grasvelli and uh, yeah, the EDIUS part is a strong uh, part of this development through 8K and there are already solutions where uh, yeah, you can already get your 8K recorder for your home, not, not really for your home. <laughs> it's, I heard it's like 200,000 uh, US dollars, something like this. So um, yeah, you might uh, think if you really need two or one is enough. But uh, yeah, it's very interesting to see that um, there are Japanese, uh, the Japanese government is pushing because I think the TV stations don't have the choice, they have to do something, right? That's correct. And even not just Japan, but standing at the NAB booth, since there's already like cinema cameras that can shoot in higher than 4K, like 6K or 8K, um, I, I've already gotten asked if EDIUS can edit bigger than 4K, even from customers outside of Japan. So I believe that, uh, how do you say, being able to answer those uh, requests is something um, we need to do in the near future. And talking about higher resolution, there's also one thing which is discussed heavily here at uh, the NAB show that is HDR. How is the perspective with EDIUS and HDR? So the first step for EDIUS is that currently EDIUS is Rec 709 color space based. So it's for the broadcast or it's for the, how do you say, television editing. So um, it's based on that right now. But to support HDR and also eventually to support other um, how you say, higher resolution formats, we need to look into supporting new color areas like BT2020, and that would also include, incorporate uh, support for HDR. So, and the first step of that support is actually already in this 8.2, where the primary color correction filter will allow you to adjust the uh, clips origin in its original color space, whether it be um, uh, how do you say, uh, Sony S-Log or um, uh, Canon or Panasonic Log files and it's in its original color space and to be able to adjust color there being able, and right now in 8.2 it is pushing that into Rec. 709 but uh, eventually in the future to be able to provide um, editing in its native color space BT2020 or HDR so be it uh, to uh, sustain that and to be able to output that in its uh, original color. I guess the new primary color correction tells a little bit about the upcoming future because there's a setting which has, says uh, color space as pro project uh, color space. Right now you cannot select uh, a project color space but if this setting is there yeah, I, I guess we can think what will come the probability uh, to, to have uh, the selection of the color space when doing a project, right? Yes, that's correct. So, thank you very much, Alex. Vielen Dank. Ich glaube, das war ein ganz interessanter Einblick zu hören. Einerseits, was jetzt in der 8.2 kommt. Die Version ist jetzt wirklich ab sofort zum Download äh, bereit. Äh, direkt am letzten NAB-Show Messetag. Und äh, dadurch haben alle Idios 8 Anwender kostenlos die Möglichkeit, die neuen Funktionen, den Motion Tracker, die primäre Farbkorrektur und weitere Funktionen äh, direkt selber auszuprobieren. Auch die Testversion ist in dieser Version 8.2 verfügbar. Also auch nicht idios kunden können sich damit vertraut machen und da mal drüber schauen. Ähm, wir haben in unserem deutschen Podcast äh, den Motion Tracker zum Thema. Wir werden nächste Woche zum Thema primäre Farbkorrektur einen Podcast veröffentlichen. Und ähm, für alle die, die zur Digitalschindmesse nach München kommen, am 3. Mai 2016, äh, dort wird ähm, Alex und äh, viele weitere von Grass Valley eben auch mit vor Ort sein und nochmals einen Ausblick geben und eben die aktuellen äh, Versionen vorstellen. Soweit von der NAB Show 2016.